We'd like to welcome everyone tonight to Central Baptist Church in Woodbridge, Virginia. I'm Pastor Brad Winnegar. It is November 21st, 2021, and uh, this is the Sunday preceding Thanksgiving, this coming Thursday. And so tonight we have a very, very special service plan. This is a service in which we are going to be praising and thanking the Lord, and we're going to be doing it publicly after we go offline. But right now, while we're online, I'd like to welcome everyone who's here, those who are still on their way, and folks that are live streaming right now, God bless you, and those that will be tuning in later on. Had a great service this morning, praise the Lord, a great Thanksgiving fellowship yesterday. God is really blessing. His hand is on our ministry, and we're giving Him all the glory and all the praise. As you get ready, as you prepare your testimony for later on, that is when we go uh, offline, I want you to think about this. First and foremost, as you're taking notes, you should have a piece of paper so that you can collect your thoughts and then try to get your uh, testimony uh, within a paragraph or less. So a couple of breaths, three, four at the most, if possible. Some of you are more amazing than others in that regard, but uh, let's, uh, let's not waste any words. First and foremost, let's praise the Lord. Amen. Let's put Him first. And praise Him for who He is, and praise Him for what He does, and praise Him for what He means to us in a real and substantive way. Secondly, very carefully then, if you desire to, to praise the Lord for good people that have crossed your path, people that have led you to Christ, people that have helped you, uh, you can pay tribute, but make sure we give God all the glory and not man. And then thirdly, uh, I want you to think about not just the blessings, but the problems that God has brought us through. God permits problems and difficulties and trials and tribulations, and He brings us through. And I want you to think about maybe drawing some conclusions and saying, here are the lessons that God has taught me. Emphasize the positive. He's brought me through the trial, the small t tribulation, and He doesn't stop blessing. He keeps on blessing and blessing. So we'll be doing that later on. You out there that are live streaming, I want you to think about what you would testify to and how you would express yourself if you had the opportunity to be with us here because you are very much a part of our church. We're welcoming everybody all the way from down in Florida all the way up to New England, all the way across the, the north, uh, over to the far west, across the Midwest, down through the south. We've got people that will be viewing in all those areas and we're very thankful for you. You are a part of our church we thank God for you. Thank you for your continued prayers and for your support. Please turn with me in the book of Psalms to the 107th Psalm. Psalm 107. And of course it begins, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for He is good. Talks about the Lord. And when we say He is good, that is His attribute of being good. He is good for His mercy. That's another attribute endureth forever. Now I want you to read with me or quote the second verse of Psalm 107. Psalm 107 and verse number 2. Ready? Begin. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We're going to do that tonight. We're going to do it in song. Take your burgundy book. The words are going to be up on the screen for you folks who are viewing and I want you to turn to number 311. Would you stand with me and sing, Redeemed how I love to proclaim it, Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Sing it. Amen. All right, give it your best. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it, Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, Redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Watch me. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus. Let's sing it. blood of the Lamb. Watch me. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. 
Let's have all the ladies and girls on the third. I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my... Everyone now. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed. Ladies, that was fantastic, but guys, I think we can do better. All right, we're going to try anyway. All right, fourth verse, men and boys. I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose law I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. That's good, everyone. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed his child and forever I am. Can you say that tonight? His child and forever I am. We believe in eternal security because the Bible teaches it. And we stand upon the truth of God's word that no man and nothing can pluck us out of God's hand. If you're saved the Bible way, you're saved forever. And praise God for that truth. I want to go to God right now and thank Him for that truth and for everything that we're going to be looking at tonight in the Word of God. And I want everyone to pray silently with me as I'm praying aloud. All of you out there on live stream, pray silently and ask God to open our hearts, each one of us, to the truth that He wants to place in our heart tonight. Father, we thank You so much for Jesus Christ. He's the reason why we're here. He's the reason why we're saved and going to heaven and we're saved forever, and we thank you for that. And Lord, I pray that you'll help us to share the good news of being redeemed with so many others. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity tonight, and help us to understand and to apply the truths of your word in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Turn around, say hello to someone, and then be seated. Thank you so much. Amen and amen. Well, we are so glad tonight to have folks in attendance and others that are viewing, some for the first time. We've gotten some new viewers just this week. We've gotten some folks who used to be in our ministry years ago who have now joined our broadcast ministry, and they view us from afar. I want to say hello to our friends viewing down in Texas, along with the others that we have already greeted. Praise the Lord. And we have tonight in our congregation a very special guest, Pastor Van Cleek's mom, is here. And so Pastor Van Cleek will have to behave himself better than he normally does. I'm kidding. Pastor Van Cleek, how are you feeling? We've been praying for you. I want to know if our prayer life means anything. It does. Amen. You're doing better? Amen. We are so glad you're here tonight. And Mrs. Van Cleek, God bless you. What an honor it is for us to have you here. Your husband was a giant of the faith, and thank God for him. And we are praising the Lord for you tonight. Let's give these folks a round of applause, shall we? God bless you. Thank you so much. How many of you had a great day today? How many of you had a lousy day? All right, I don't want to know about that. All right, are you getting all warmed up for Turkey Day? Now, I don't know if you do turkey or ham or if you do both or whatever it is that you're planning to do, but keep the Lord Jesus Christ at the center of your celebration that's coming up. And keep in mind that God has given us an opportunity, an investment of something very, very precious. If we live that long, and if Jesus doesn't rapture us before then, we are going to have 24 hours in that day on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, and we need to make the most of it. I'm thinking about what was written in the Sunshine for Seniors column of the Sword of the Lord this past September. Did you know that there are at least two days in every week that we should never worry about? You say, let's see, Monday, Tuesday, what, what days are those? All right, two days that we should always keep free from fear and apprehension. I bet you've already guessed. One of those days is yesterday with its mistakes and cares, its faults and blunders, its aches and pains. Why worry about yesterday since it's already passed? We just need to confess it and move on, amen? And then the other day that we should not worry about is tomorrow with its possible adversaries, its burdens, its greater problems and increased dangers. It is settled fact that most of those things pertaining to tomorrow and beyond are our 
uh, immediate, are, are beyond our immediate control. Tomorrow's sun will rise either in splendor or behind a mask of clouds. Therefore, until it does, we have no stake in tomorrow, for it is yet to be lived. It is yet unborn. I like that. That's good. Thursday is coming. I want us to have a wonderful time together tonight and then also on Wednesday evening. We are going to have a candlelight service Wednesday night. This is Thanksgiving Eve this Wednesday night. Normally we would be in the book of Colossians verse by verse, but we're going to have a quiet time. The lights will be dim, the candles will be burning, and we will have some songs that we will sing together, and we will have some wonderful things from the Word of God, some, some illustrations, some preaching, some teaching, all of it designed to help us, to build us up. So tonight has its purpose, and Wednesday night has its purpose, and then Thursday, as we've mentioned, is a day to truly give thanks. So let's think about all of these things now. And uh, once again, I want to thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, right down front, we have the days of praise for December, January, and February. You can pick up as many of those as you can use. I want to thank you for your faithfulness in giving the tithes and the offerings in our special Give a Christmas Gift to Jesus Fund, which uh, we are in the process of receiving through the end of December. Our bulletin, Give Thanks, is available in the back. Also, you can online, you can tap the right spot and get a digital copy and to get your information therein. I believe the Bible is the Word of God. How about you? Hold your Bible up. Say it with me if you believe it. I believe the Bible is the Word of God. I believe there are no mistakes in it. I believe there are no mistakes. And God helping me, and God helping me, I'm going to try to obey it try to obey. We need God's help, of course, in order to succeed at that. We have just sung a song, Redeemed, How I Love to Proclaim It. We have quoted from the 107th Psalm, the second verse, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And who are the redeemed? Those who have been bought back. We know in the Bible, the doctrine of redemption is one of the great salvation words and doctrines. And we understand that to be redeemed means to be bought back. That which once was the property of has become estranged. We know that sin separated us from God. And through the blood of Jesus Christ, we're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but we are, we are redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So Psalm 107 lays the groundwork tonight for the message that we are going to share with you. And I hope that as we read this, this will become one of your favorite passages of Scripture. It's just a portion of the entire psalm. We don't have time for all 43 verses tonight, although I know some preachers who might attempt that. But we're going to look at the first eight verses, and it's one of the divisions we see repeated over and over again what we find in the eighth verse. We find it in the 15th. We find it in the 22nd and we find it in the 31st verse, all the same. So if you memorize, if you memorize that verse, you're ready for four, for four verses next time there's a memory contest. All right, here we go, Psalm 107. Would you follow as I read? I'm not going to comment uh, just now, but I'm going to just read. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Now everybody read with me out loud verse 8. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And I say that tonight. Oh, that we would. When it comes testimony time, take that, that half sheet of paper or that back of that envelope and remember to praise the Lord for who He is and for what He does and what He has meant to you 
and the, the people that he has used in your life to bring you along. And we haven't arrived yet, obviously, but certainly God has used some people, some mentors, some helpers in our life, and uh, folks that took the time to win us to Christ and to help us to understand more about this life. And the problems that he brought us through, the tribulations that he has taught us from, the things that have enabled us to grow a little bit more this year and hopefully make some progress. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Father, I pray now that you'll help us. Uh, I've asked you already, and I ask you now to help us to apply this so that when it comes time for testimonies, there won't be a long, painful, uncomfortable silence, but people will immediately respond. And even if it's a sentence or two or a paragraph, what they say will be from the heart. It will be genuine. It will be life experience that you brought us through by your grace for your glory. Help us tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I see in the very first verse a mandate, a mandate. We hear a lot about mandates. And I got to say that any mandate that comes down from human government is by far inferior to any mandate that comes down from on high. God has the authority. Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And that was just prior to his uh, giving the, the great commission. He has the authority. He has the power. Jesus Christ is worthy. And he is the one who gives us the mandate. And the mandate is to give thanks. This is not an option, but it is a command. We are commanded to give thanks unto the Lord. And thanks should be more than one day out of the year. Thanks should ever be on our lips. I remember nearly every time I spoke with my mom during the last few years of her life, long as she was cognizant, I would thank her for giving birth to me and allowing me to have life. Now, I know ultimately that's in God's hand, but she and Dad brought me into this world, and I was so thankful I would thank her for that. When I would visit with her, it would not be frequently, it would be a couple times a year, and when I would pray before going, I would put my arm around her, I would hold her hand, and I would say, thank you for my dear mother. Thank you for the gift of life. I always did, and I always will. And I thank God for eternal life through Jesus Christ. There is no way that any religion or any uh, a religious order could uh, have come up with a plan that would save my soul for all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Instead, it took the intervention of God so that he came down in the form of a baby born uh, to the Virgin Mary, sinless and perfect and blameless and became our Savior. He is the Lamb of God. I thank God for eternal life. I thank God for that plan which is absolutely perfect. You can... Try to approach it in a critical way and you cannot find anything that is absolutely deficient uh, whatsoever in any way with the plan of salvation. God's plan of salvation still is appealing. It still draws men and women. I do not know, preacher, I don't know what's gotten into people that they would go to a religious place. And I don't know what's gotten into people who claim to be preachers who would stand up in front of those people in that religious place and then would failed to preach about God's wonderful salvation plan through the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't know why that is other than the fact that they might not be saved or they're ashamed of Jesus. I can't imagine it every single time we try to draw attention to Jesus Christ, to the cross, to the empty tomb. I thank God for life, for eternal life, and I thank God for the abundant life. I know you've heard this before. You hear it from me all the time. But he's offered us abundant life. And yet how many people who claim to be saved don't have the first clue as to what the abundant life entails? The abundant life, it's layers upon layer upon layer. It's depths of abundant life that is provided free by the grace of God. God intends for us not only to be physically alive and to be spiritually alive, but he wants us also to be energized and uh, to live out the Christ life before people so that they can't help but see Jesus Christ in us. The abundant life is the best advertisement. We can profess, but we want to live out the abundant life. People need to see that it makes a difference 
to us to be saved. And we're glad that we've been saved. We've been transformed. We've been changed. This is a mandate. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. It's in the imperative mood. It includes thanking God when we're in a public place. And pray good and loud. Don't, don't get one of those shy streaks when you're in a public place. You're in a crowded restaurant. And when I, when I go to prayer, I say, let's, uh, let's bow our heads and pray now. And we try to get the whole plan of salvation in the prayer if we possibly can. So people know that we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So it's a mandate for praising. And we have that tonight. Now there is a proper mode for praising the Lord too as well. It's in the giving of thanks. Thanksgiving is the giving of thanks. So kids, look at me. Look at me. Thanksgiving isn't just turkey. Thanksgiving is the giving of thanks. All right, so what is Thanksgiving? It's the giving of thanks. That's right. So when we thank the Lord for what he's done for us, I want you to think about this now. It's very important that we think about honoring God. God gets the credit. God gets the glory. It is a mode of of praising Him. By thanking Him, we are praising Him. And failure to thank God is a failure to properly praise Him. So it's a mandate. We have the mode for praising, which is thanks. And then the motivation. Put it down. The motivation for praising Him. The psalmist says this, for He is good. And we've identified 23 of those attributes that are in Scripture that are characteristics of God. And these are divine characteristics, which, which means it isn't just our opinion that He is good. Oh, that's our opinion, but that isn't where the good came from. It emanated from God. He is good. And that affects everything He does and why He does it, because He is good. It's His goodness. His mercy endureth forever. And that's mercy's plural so many times in the Bible. And we have uh, so much of his, uh, of his mercies spoken of in Scripture. It, uh, it shows that he is a compassionate, caring God. And he's compassionate and caring under all circumstances. His love and his grace and his mercy, frequently addressed by the Apostle Paul as he begins his letters to the churches, uh, uh, is uh, <coughs> the combination that cannot be equaled by, by anyone else in the universe. It is His alone, it belongs to Him, and so praise the Lord. So who's to do this praising? Well, the redeemed, those that have been reconciled. We have been reconciled according to first, uh, and, and, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We have been reconciled for the purpose of being reconcilers. We've been saved to help win others to Christ. We've been brought so that we can help bring others to Christ. And we do this as we're led of the Holy Spirit. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Uh, let the redeemed, people who've experienced it, not people who've heard about it, not people who've observed it in others, but people who have actually experienced this, let the redeemed of the Lord say so from their own experience. We're told in the Scriptures uh, that we are to be His witnesses. Now, a witness is somebody who tells what he or she knows, what they've personally experienced, not what they've been told. When you get on the witness stand in a court of law and you begin to recite your testimony and they stop you midway, they say, would you repeat that again? You say, mm, let's see, how did I memorize that? That's not going to cut it. Because when you've experienced redemption, it's not just something that you're repeating over and over. Like a, like a memorized uh, piece of prose. But rather, it is your own testimony. We're witnesses of what the Lord does. He reaches down. And when He reached way down, like we sang this morning, and saved us, He reached way down. He saved us totally and completely by His grace and for His own glory. And we had nothing to do with it. He went all the way down to save us. And He hath redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. In the case of Old Testament Israel, they were in captivity and they experienced 
uh, the hand of the enemy on occasions. Uh, in the case of believers, we have been redeemed from the hand of Satan. We literally were in Satan's grasp because of sin. And we have been redeemed. We've been bought back. And the price that was paid was God paying with the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the satisfaction. And because of that, the death grip of Satan was released. Deliverance occurred because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to notice what redemption includes. Not only that reconciliation, not only that, that, that right standing, but notice, and gathered them out of the lands. Now, the lands speak of the surrounding nations other than the promised land. And they gathered out of the lands then and will be in the future. And they will be back in the land in belief. Right now, they're there, some of them, but in unbelief. But they will be back there in belief in the millennium. They'll be gathered from the east, the west, the north, and the south. That's all four directions. And we understand that the world is round in shape, but we have four directions. There will be people representative of all the different parts of the world who will be among the redeemed in heaven someday. A great heavenly choir will be made up of many different peoples who have been saved the same way by the same Savior, even though we appear different and we speak differently and uh, we have different cultures, yet we'll be united in our faith in Jesus Christ. And He will gather us, in that sense, just as uh, His Old Testament covenant people will be gathered as well. We will be gathered uh, at that time and be in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. So we have, we have the redeemed, and then we have the returned. They're the redeemed and they're the returned. So we're going someplace. Our response, our response is to come out of that wandering, verse 4, in the wilderness in a solitary way where we found no city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty, our soul fainting, and our response is to be renewed. So we have all of those alliterated words. And all of them refer to our, our transformation. And our transformation is entirely to the credit of the Lord. When we praise the Lord, we need to praise Him for the fact that He saved us, He released us, He, he redeemed us, He reconciled us, uh, He's returning us, he is, he, is, uh, he is renewing us. All of those things are true in our case. And think about it. Think about when it happened and how it happened and how we, how we responded and what we, what we were thinking and what we're thinking now. And it, it's just good. It's a good thing for us to do to review all of that. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right, as we see here. He led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. There is nothing aimless. There is nothing unprepared, unrehearsed. Everything that God is doing in this transformative work of grace has a purpose. It has a design. Now, it may catch us by surprise, but nothing catches God by surprise. And as my songwriter friend wrote, did it ever occur to you that nothing ever occurred to God? Nothing ever occurred to God because He already knows everything. But it catches us by surprise. And so in, from the human standpoint, you know, us looking out of our eyes, we say, Lord, you surprised me. He wasn't surprised by it. Didn't catch Him by surprise. Nothing ever occurred to God. He, he brings us out of a place and He brings us out of a, of a state, uh, perhaps a, of stagnation, of spinning our wheels, uh, we were wanderers, we were sojourners, we were stressed out, uh, we were on the outside looking in, and he now brings us into that close relationship so that because he is ours and we are his, as the song says, he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me 
I am his own. Salvation is more than escaping hell. Salvation is a relationship with and in and through the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's so much more than most people think of. I'm, I'm glad, listen, for my part, I'm glad I'm saved and not going to hell and I don't have to pay the price of my sins. I'm glad that the Lord paid it for me. I'm sorry that he had to, but I'm glad that he did. But that held the world about. I was in the Word of God today and I was reading this and look, look at this. Now, it was always there, but I just realized it. I just saw it. I'm just now applying it. I'm experiencing it. I want to share it with somebody else. If I talk that way to people, they'll think there's something wrong with me. No, if you talk that way, people will know that finally there's something right with you. We need more people to talk that way. Do you know that lost people know there's something different about a saved person who is really, truly, I mean, radically saved, who is completely, entirely from the head of their uh, crown of their head to the soles of their feet, they are excited about Jesus Christ. They know something has happened. And they may not be able to describe it or put their finger on it, but they sense, they know that just being around you, there's something different about you. This is the full realization of what our inheritance is here and now. Now, we have, we have something already in heaven. We have the down payment, the earnest of our inheritance we have heaven waiting for us. But we've got something down here right now. We've got the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God. He is the third person of the triune Godhead. And the Holy Spirit, who dwells within us, does so much for us. I know that this was somewhat undefined in Old Testament times and their experience, and only in the New Testament dimension do we understand more fully and completely this business of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon people in Bible times, but now he comes into us and he indwells us. And we, we read about that relationship that we have with the Lord that is so close now because the Holy Spirit's inside of us. He doesn't make us roll on the floor and talk in gibberish and, and howl and make noises and be strange and weird and out of this world. But instead, he, he does a number of things that are described for us in John chapter 16. I hope you'll turn there with me. John chapter 16. And every boy and girl, along with every adult here, should learn who the Holy Spirit is and what He means to me, to me and what He means to you. In John 16 verse 7, nevertheless, Jesus speaking, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And that's what he has done. This has, this has been spoken and it has happened already. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Verse 12, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it, here it is, when he, notice that the Spirit of God is spoken of as he, as a person here, when he, the Spirit of truth, that's a title, and yet it's a functional working title, is come. He will guide you into all truth. Here's how it works. Brother Gabe has written actually two books. second one's going to be published in the near future, and praise God for that. And I've, I've read both books, manuscripts, in some close, up close and personal detail. But if there's something I don't understand, and I want to know how this narrative goes. Now, Gabe, tell me how it was back in Iowa when you're speaking about this experience on page such and so. Tell me how it was. And so Gabe then shares with me, up close and personal, what it says on the page. But it makes me understand and helps me to apply it because he's the author. 
we've got something better than Gabe sitting next to us explaining what's on page such and so of his book. We've got God, who is the author of this book, inside of us. And we can actually say, Dear Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, Spirit of truth, would you guide me into a fuller, more complete, more intimate, more personal application of this truth? There's only one interpretation. The scriptures have no private interpretation. But just think about this. If I am really going to have the fullness of what the Lord wants for me, the fullness of the truth, the fullness of the reality of this truth, then I'm going to need the author to make it more real to me. How many of you have been in the Word, let's just say in the last calendar year, and you've had an experience like that where the Holy Spirit of God has actually illuminated and made more real some truth? You knew the truth, but the truth has become more real to you on a personal level. I got my hand raised. Amen. 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 How precious is that? Isn't that precious? And in that moment, there's no doubt who you belong to. There, there's no doubt about, you know, whose spiritual family we're in. And, and there's no doubt about uh, God having a plan and a program for us because he's revealing that, uh, that to us and making it more real to us. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into, into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. The Holy Spirit's not drawing attention as we see uh, abused and misused in the, the charismatic and neo-Pentecostal movements. Uh, there are folks that just absolutely have gone off the deep end misapplying the ministry of the third person of the Trinity. But whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. We know in the broad scheme of prophecy, we understand that, things to come. Pentecost's great book, things to come. That, that whole scheme of things, we, we, uh, we suspect we, we're pretty close on most items. Some things the jury's still out on, but we're, 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 we're close and have been for some time, uh, if not spot on. But also there is an application what am I supposed to be and what am I supposed to be doing until Jesus comes to take me out of here? How am I supposed to be living? How am I supposed to be parenting and how am I supposed to conduct myself in, in my marriage and in my work and in my neighborhood, in my community, my nation? How am I supposed to be? The Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. That's important. Otherwise, we just get all lathered up about every political thing to come down the pike. We, listen, we need to choose the battles that the Holy Spirit gives us light on. And we need to be all invested in a spiritual way so that we can be Romans 13 born-again citizens of this great country. That's so important. We don't want to just go off, you know, uh, in our own emotions, in our own flesh, because we're excited about something, but we need to be guided in our involvement in this great country. We need to be guided in our uh, family relationships. We need to be guided uh, as a part of this community, as a part of this church. We need to be guided by the Holy Spirit. If we're full with the fullness of the Spirit in our life, if we've been in the Word, then we're going to be guided. But if we're a stranger to this, if we just hit and miss and it's cold, uh, we're going to make some tactical mistakes, some errors, which it, they're going to cost us dearly in terms of lost opportunities, lost time, uh, lost, uh, you know, misdirected spiritual energy. All right, so he shall glorify who? Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit guiding us into all truth as we apply what the Word of God says about who we're to be, what we're to be, and what we're to do, as we're taking that application and we're saying yes to the Lord, in every case, Jesus Christ should be getting glory. Amen. He should be getting glory. 
Jesus Christ, all right? For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. There it is. The illumination, revelation, illumination, understanding of the scriptures, but applying it, that's how important it is. We have that close walk with the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We've got a mandate. Our mode is to give thanks. Our motive is because of who He is. He is good. He is merciful. He is loving. He is gracious. Uh, this, is, this is who He is. And this has been revealed to us because we're saved and we've got the Holy Spirit. It's not just, it's not something distant, but the Holy Spirit, the author of all of this is inside of us and He guides us into truth so that we can behave it and live to the glory of God. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes, please? Every head You've bowed. You've been viewing a service at Central Baptist Church. We never dismiss the service without clearly presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is, that Jesus came to this earth and sinlessly lived for 33 years before he voluntarily gave his life. He died on the cross, he was buried, he rose from the dead, and he's alive forevermore. Through the shedding of his blood and through his victory at uh, the, the empty tomb, Jesus Christ now offers salvation to you. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you pray right now from your heart to God and ask him to save you? Something like this, Dear God, just pray, dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. I deserve to pay for my sins. I deserve to pay for my sins. I believe Jesus died to save me. I believe Jesus died to save me. Right now, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior. Right now, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior. Please take away my sins and take me to heaven when I die. Please take away my sins and take me to heaven when I die. Did you pray that prayer? Did you mean it? Wonderful. I want you to get in contact with us and let us know of your decision. Now, if you've already been saved, I want to encourage you to live the life that God would have you to live according to His Word. If you desire more instruction, more information. We'll be happy to supply it to you. We'd like to talk to you. The information is right here, and we'd love to speak to you. If you have any spiritual needs whatsoever, may God bless you.